appreciate the opportunity to address the body. And believe me, I want to get out here like everybody else. Tonight's my daughter's uh, 16th birthday. But you know, it, I, I feel like I'm in bizarro world where everything seems to work in opposite. You know, there's attacks coming across the aisle about not telling, using accurate facts and making accusations. I mean, I, in, in my five years here, I don't think it's ever been this bad. Maybe it's been the change of people sitting in the seats, but the facts seem to be to mean nothing anymore. And in this bill that we're fighting over here, again, it's like deja vu. It's another big, huge bill that you all want to have charter schools. I, I, the, the entire nation is backing away from charter schools because they've found them not to be transparent, they're hard on accountability, they're hard to account for the money, Mr. President, and, and they're curtailing them. In some states, they put a moratorium on them. You know, there's been some success. Don't, don't not understand me. I recognize some charter schools have done well, primarily in urban areas, in disadvantaged urban areas, where they've served a purpose of, of, of saving kids who otherwise uh, would not be able to be saved in the schools that they had to go to. That's not West Virginia. We, our largest city is not an urban area compared to the rest of the country. We are not an urban state. The vast majority of charter schools perform at the same level as their public school counterparts, some well below. But Ohio has lost $4 billion. The, the United States of America has lost a billion that they, they can't account for on schools that have, that have never opened, that never become functional, or that have gone out of business. Michigan public education is in turmoil because of charter schools, and that's our friend Ms. Devos, who seems to want the same for the rest of the country. I think if she just sent us one of her 10 yachts, we'd be in good shape. Maybe we could use that to increase teacher pay. But you know, I keep hearing we can't keep the status quo, that we're at the bottom of the rankings, rankings that, you know, get manipulated constantly. We heard about the ALEC ranking, we're 47th, but only because we don't have charters and ESAs. That's the kind of numbers we throw around to justify what we're doing here today and to condemn what we're doing, which is trying to add some transparency to this monstrous bill that is getting shoved down the throats of West Virginians. Now, you know, People can say we're at the bottom, we're 30th in ACT scores. That's a pretty good measure. You know, all the ones below us have charter schools. Now, there's some above us that have charter schools, but the ones below us have charter schools. So what's that tell you? Charter schools aren't making a big difference. But what we've done is financially starved our public education system, not just over the last five years. We haven't fully funded it probably ever. But certainly in the last five years, no pay raise for four years for our teachers. Only when they struck did they get a 5% pay raise. That's resulted in 700 plus uncertified teachers in our state. That makes it tough to teach our children and get the results we want. So what do we do? Mike Romana gets up, talks about how bad the bill is. And to my friend from the fourth, I think the Senate Democrats did introduce a whole bevy of separate bills that we think would have fixed or helped fix our public education system, certainly would have helped our educators. But I put on everybody's desk, and if you didn't take a second to look at it, I'm going to take a second to tell you about it. This is from the Doddridge County School System. In 2009, Doddridge County was 53rd, the 53rd lowest county in our state for math and ELA score, scores. They had a 77.9% graduation rate. That's almost as bad as South Carolina, which by the way is ranked 12th in the country by ALEC. They had 31.4% of their children were in poverty, which was the 45th worst in West Virginia. These numbers bother me. Well, what did Dodgers County do? They create some new school system, divert money out of public education? No, they doubled down. They doubled down on public education. They increased spending by $5,000 per student. They created 
programs such as career and technical training. They have a STEM lab. They brought technology to every classroom and every student. They made sure children were fed three meals a day, including over the summer with their read and feed program. They did career exploration for freshmen so that they would be guided on what kind of education they wanted in order to go on to have a career when they, when they left high school. And they created the holistic child, which is mental health professionals in their schools and social workers in their schools. They gave their teachers a $10,000 per teacher raise, every teacher in the county. Does that sound familiar? Sounds like the bills we introduced when this special session began, which is sat in education committee, which is not met. But what is the result of that? Doddridge County now has certified teachers in every classroom for the subject they're teaching. They have brought their schools into the modern area era by fully funding them. They have moved from the 53rd worst county in math and ELA scores in West Virginia to the fourth in 10 years, 53rd to fourth. Their graduation rate has went from 77.9 to 97.4%. And the poverty among children has dropped from 31% to 25.8%, which is the 24th best in West Virginia. Now, am I standing up here to tell you that that's the answer to all our problems? No, it's not. I'm sure it's not. But you know what? That's where we ought to start. That's what we ought to be debating. How to find money to fully fund public education. How to find money to fully educate our children, which is what we all want to do. There is no solid evidence that charters or ESAs add to the education of any child over a broad spectrum of an entire state. What it does prove, it's a very controversial matter that a group called Alex seems to want very bad and Betsy Devo seems to want even worse. But it, there's no promise for our children from that. Why would we drag ourselves down here week after week after week to fight about that when here is the pathway to improving education in West Virginia? This is the way we do it. We pay our teachers a decent wage so we can attract and keep good teachers. We make sure our kids are healthy, both mentally and physically. And we make sure that they have the tools they need to learn. Mr. President, I'm tired of being here. Certainly, nobody could accuse me of wanting to be down here. I actually dread being down here. And I would just ask, Mr. President, that we give up on this. It's not going to happen over there. It's not going to happen in the House. They've already told us that very clearly. The only answer, Mr. President, is separate these bills, vote on them like we do every other bill in this Senate, and let's move on to things like potholes, holes in our roads. Let's move on to making sure we get rid of this opioid epidemic. Let's move on to important issues, Mr. President. Thank you for the privilege of uh, standing back up. Thank you.